Hey, you guys. I am running a little bit late this evening, and I apologize. I'm going to um, get a couple of things set up yet. And um, I like to have everything right here at my fingertips, but that's not going to happen tonight. So we'll just go with it. It's going to be good. Let me find the live. I don't see it yet. Okay. Here it is. All right. So this evening, we're going to do this braided card technique. And if you haven't seen this done before, it does require a pattern, which I will put on my blog. So you'll need a pattern like this. But this is such an easy card but it looks complicated. It just looks beautiful though. So it's different and it's, um, it's fun to make. So I think you'll enjoy it. So my name's Teresa Tucker and I'm in St. Joseph, Illinois. I'm a independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and the owner of Tucker Top Notch Designs. And tonight I will probably need your help figuring out or deciding on a couple of things. So uh, let me grab my uh, Bumblebee stamp pad. And green apple green. And my cleaner. And my glue. And my stamping seal. <laughs> I think that's it. It's enough to get us started. Okay, so let's get rid of the clutter here. Need my snips. I'll set some of this stuff out of the way. We need the dimensionals tonight. And I'm going to grab my extra cart. I've got a rolling cart, and it's perfect for putting extra things to the side when I don't need them. So tonight, uh, this card, I'm using the Timeless Tulips, and this is uh, currently in our catalog, and it is um, going to be in our next catalog that will be available to customers on May the 4th. So if you are interested in seeing any of the catalog PDF, or um, if, you, you know, if you're interested in any of that, that's one of the perks of being a demonstrator. So being a demonstrator doesn't mean that you have to have shows or do live videos or anything. I was a demonstrator for several years, but I was what they call technically, what it isn't tech, technical, but it's a, a hobby demonstrator. So I used the um, discount that I got, which is 20% off, and then you can get up to 25% off and then additional products on top of that as uh, rewards. So, anyway, um, so let's get started here. <clears throat> so grab my larger scissors. All right, so what we're going to do here is um, we want to cut one of these patterns out. There's three of them. And we're only going to use one tonight. And you want to cut it a little, um, you want to give it some extra space on the top and the bottom. And then here, we're just going to cut pretty close to this line here because we want to line this up with the edge of the cardstock, our card base. All right, so we're going to set that aside. 
and we get our card base. Set this aside. And we'll fold this in half. And um, I don't see my bone folder. There we go. And I'm going to grab a couple of um, paper clips because that helps hold everything in place. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So along the fold here, we're going to line this up. This is at the top of the card, so we'll put that up to the top. And then this, we're going to get it as close to the edge as we can, as close to the fold as possible. We're going to fold this over. And then paper clip it in place. And the same here. All right, then you want to get your paper snips. Now, Stampin' Up, our paper snips are very sharp. And what's nice about them is that they're very, they've got a very sharp point. And you need that when you're cutting directly up to the end of the line. A lot of scissors have rounded tips, and it's hard to uh, clip right up as far as you need to go and no further. So we're just going to cut along these lines. I got my Poochie in here with me tonight. He's a mama's boy. He's 10. Uh, he's a American Dingo. His name is Carter. And he is a rescue. So I used to work with or I volunteered with an organization called Mobile Mets. You've probably heard of them. And before Mike and I got married, I lived alone. And I would um, go to Champaign. So I live in St. Joe, but I would go to Champaign, north of Champaign, actually. And I would meet the caravan there. And I would get my dogs, however many. I had several crates, so I could take the small ones and the big ones. And so I would take them back to my house. They would spend the night with me Saturday night. And then I would take them back to meet their caravan. And then they would head further north. So there's several no-kill shelters. And um, I think there's one in Michigan. <clears throat> there's one. Well, there there's several of them up north. So that's where they would go. They'd go to no-kill shelters until... They could find homes for them. <clears throat> so, all right, so here we're going to get rid of this. We don't need it anymore. Now what we're going to do is, so you're going to fold this, this top one down like this. And then we're going to cut this one off. But we're going to save it. And then you're going to skip this one and you're going to fold this one down. And it'll fold right on top of here, the one below it. Then you skip this one and fold this one down. Uh oh. Just a second. Let's see if I can get this to fold better. Okay, it's a little crooked, it is still a little crooked. Okay, we'll make it work. And then this one is next. So I'll say that you need to make sure that you have the pattern lined up properly so that these braids well, they look like braids, they're faux braids, all line up. 
There we go. <clears throat> okay. And then when you close your card, it looks like that. So we're going to take this leftover piece here that we cut off and we want it to come down and touch the tip of this piece right here. So we're going to glue this in place. So I'll get my liquid glue. Just put a little tiny bit on there. It doesn't need much. Sometimes I get my tweezers out to do this because I have to line it up. But it looks like it's going to go pretty simply right there. Okay. So we're going to let that sit for a moment so it can dry. Next, I have... Well, let's go ahead and look at this. Next, I have this piece of petal pink. And I have embossed it with the Tasteful Texture 3D Embossing Folder. And that's available, too, um, in the catalog. So I've embossed it. And now we're going to put a piece of Granny Apple Green cardstock on it. This is four and a quarter by two and a half. And it'll go here. And then on top of that, we need to decide what uh, designer series paper we want to use because I ran out of this and I have this, which I think is, I don't think it's good against that green because it's just, it's just going to get lost in there. Um, we have this piece. It's four and a quarter by two and a half. And I also have this option. So I want something that's going to go well with this um, bumblebee tulip here. So maybe this would be better. We've got this option. So what do you think? I know you're watching, but you're not talking. Just go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. I kind of like that one though. How about you? Don't be shy. Okay, that's what we'll do. I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter by two and a half. <clears throat> bring in my paper trimmer. I hope this is the right size. We'll find out. Four and a quarter, two and a half. Yeah. I've got my little uh, measurements written over here. But that's not right. Let's see. I need to cut about a quarter of an inch off. Let's see if this is lined up. There we go. That's the size we need. Four and a quarter by two and a quarter. I'll have all the instructions uh, linked with this video so that you have them. So we'll put this on here. So we got that you know what? I think I'd rather have the leaves going this way. So let's tr let's try cutting that again. Four and a half by two and a quarter. So it needs to be four and a quarter. Just a second. <clears throat> I think I need to get it some more. I have another sheet like this. Just one moment. Hmm. Well, I don't 
see it. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Well, it might. Four and a quarter by two and a half. So the two and a half has got to go this way. All right, let's look. There we go. That'll work. I think that's why my measurement was off a moment ago is because I had turned it and didn't realize I had turned it. So this will work. All right. So now we're going to just set this aside and we're going to start working on the tulip. I've got some scraps, a basic white card stock. And let's see, I'll pull out one of these. Well, that might not be wide enough. Maybe that one. I keep my larger pieces, but I don't keep everything because I, I use so much of the basic white that it, um, that I just get so much of it in small scraps and I don't really need the small scraps most of the time. So I don't hold on to them. Okay, so since this stamp set is poly photopolymer, it is it doesn't have the um, rubber backing to it, so we use a stamp, a pierce mat, to give it a little bit of cushion. And let's see, I don't want this to cross over in front of you. Just going to get one of these small scraps just to protect it. All right, so here's what I did. I need a larger block. I thought I brought it on. Here it is. Okay, so we're going to take this. Uh, tool up here and we're going to stamp it with um, Bumblebee. <laughs> I had a little, the back of a little dimensional on there, so. So we want to just juice this up a little bit and try to, try not to stamp in the center of your pad all the time because you will wear it out. So we're going to stamp this. And clean the stamp off. So we always want to clean the stamps off. Now the red that you see on here might look pink to you. That's not going to hurt anything. They do get stained when you use the brighter colors like the um, red or um, the Merlot. Those types of colors will stain it, but it's fine. It doesn't affect the stamp at all. All right, so we'll put this one back, and we are going to use this one, and I'm going to stamp it twice. Actually, I have, this is where I need to show you this little trick. So you'll need a, a silicone mat in order to do this. So with this stamp, or with this punch that comes with it, it's got this design here, which is this this particular stamp and it only goes one way. So I'm going to show you how to mirror that so you can cut it on both sides. And sometimes it's easier just to cut it out by hand, but we'll give it a try. See what, um, see if we can get it lined up properly. So we'll stamp this over here. And because we need the other side, we're going to stamp it on this mat. And I'm going to just punch out this piece here. If this doesn't work out this way, then we'll just have to hand cut it out. So that's okay. That's what I did with this other one. All right. So 
when we stamp this on here, I will try to line this up with the stamp. And then we'll take a one of these clear blocks and just run it over so that the ink transfers. Hey, not bad. I guess the practice I did before I came online, <laughs> before I did the live, it's uh, paid off. So I tried that several times. This is the best I've seen yet. So that's good news. All right, so I'm gonna wipe my mat off. We'll set this aside. Can I push my mat up? Yes. Up here like this, Tanya? Is that better? Okay, so now we will go ahead and we're going to punch this out. Actually, I'm going to cut these apart because I don't want to, I don't want to cut out this at the same time I'm cutting out the tulip because it'll, it's likely not to cut it where I need it to cut. So we'll just, we're going to line this up. So we line these up upside down so we can see the image and line it up and then you just squeeze your punch a little bit and when you do that it'll it'll grab the paper I need to get up a little further thanks Tanya it'll grab the paper like this and then you just want to get it as centered as you can and then punch it All right, now we're gonna punch out this one. So sometimes when, you're, when your paper isn't long enough, all you need to do is just grab a post-it and stick it on the edge like this, and then slide your cardstock in line it up and punch it. Okay. So while we've got this out, I want to go ahead and stamp the leaves. And I'm going to do that with um, granny apple green and garden green. So I'm going to put this leaf on here and I'm going to stamp it in the granny green, granny apple green, I'm sorry, granny apple green. And then I'm going to just touch off the edges with the garden green like this. So I'm just going to roll it along there just to get, just to get a little bit of the green, darker green on the edges. Oh, just like that. And we're going to stamp two of these. See? And we'll go back, stamp it again. And then run this along the edge of the stamp. Both sides. Like that. Excuse my arm. And we'll stamp it again. All right. So I'm dangerous around open ink pads, so I'm going to go ahead and close these up. I'll wipe off the stamp. Put it 
back. Okay, so let's see here. Where are we at? I'm going to fussy cut these leaves out because we don't have a punch for it. They're so small. It's okay. It doesn't take very long to fussy cut. I used to not like to fussy cut at all. I thought it was boring. I wanted to get to the creating, but now I find it sort of relaxing. Unless I'm running late. So I'd hope to make extra cards, some other uh, samples for you to see, but I didn't get to it. I had to work today. I work for the University of Illinois full time, and then I run my business practically full time, but many times I'm up until midnight working on my Stampin' Up! But I enjoy, I just enjoy it. So, there we go. Just about there. Okay. We got that. All right. One more thing we have to stamp. And that is the stem. Let me get a longer block. put this I'm going to use the garden green I don't want to put it on that there we go I need a little bit bigger workspace that's one of the things I'm we're working on. I don't know when I'll get it, but we're going to redesign this area so that I can have a larger workspace. I have a large table to the side and then also another one behind me that I use when I'm creating. But as far as the going live, I don't have anything large enough or as large as I'd like, I guess. So we're going to cut this out. How are you doing, Tanya? Did you watch Julie's live tonight? So she comes on at 710 and I used to watch her all the time. And, and so that's why I set my Thursday nights up for 810 so that if somebody was um, watching her and they wanted to watch me, they'd have time to switch over. And plus, that gave me a chance to watch what she was doing and then start mine right afterwards. So I just love her work. She just, she does beautiful work. All right. So we have our pieces. We've got our stem and two leaves. We have our tulip. And these are actually leaves. And I use them to, um, to give the tool it more dimension. So let's go ahead and put this together. Now for these leaves that I'm gonna make into petals, I'm gonna pop those up on dimensionals like I did with this one. Oops. And the pick tool is really nice for this job because you can get underneath the dimensional and then just put it right on Oops, I got two of them. 
and then just put them right on here like this. And then all you have to do is um, remove the back. And sometimes I use my pick tool to do that as well. You can just reach down there like that and get them all off at the same time, one right after the other. And you don't have to worry about them falling on the floor because I usually just um, toss them in the trash right then and there. Okay, so this one's going to go here like this. And then we'll do the same with this one. this here and let it flare out a little bit like this there we go all right so I think we're going to just start putting this down And since I've already put the dimensionals on here, I'm going to use liquid glue. Otherwise, I would use my stamp and seal. Okay. And then for this, I'm going to use a glue dot. I'm just going to put it up under the edge. Do you ever get glue dots on your fingernails? If you're not careful, you will. All right, so I'm just going to lift up the edge of this and slide this in. And I'm going to move it over a little bit so I've got room for the for the leaves and then we'll just snip this off down here all right so now we're ready for the leaves and it can go off of the designer series paper a tad because it's still going to be on the card it's going to fit in the envelope just fine And I'm going to just put this down flat. I'm not going to put this on dimensionals because I'm going to, when I get to the greeting, I'm going to put dimensionals on it. Let me make sure I'm doing this one right. Yep. Okay. And now the next one. And it will go like this. like the glue doesn't want to come out but I don't want to squeeze it too hard because if I do I'm just going to get a big mess okay so I rather like the way this looks against this designer series paper better than this one but I didn't have any more all right so now we're going to put it down on the granny apple green that looks like it's centered pretty well my friends tell me I have crooked eyes. I can't get something in the middle to save my life. All right. Now we're going to put it on the petal pink embossed cardstock. And 
and I do everything sideways. I'm not sure why I even write sideways. It's like people, they'll hand me a piece of paper and they'll say, here, sign here. And then it's like, I've got to turn it completely to the side to, in order to sign it. And I don't know why. It's just always been that way. Oh, this paper moved a little. I'm trying to pull it back this way some. I don't think it's working. Okay. <clears throat> How's that? This tulip looks a little chubbier than that one. All right. So now we're going to, um, we're actually going to put it down on our card. Oh, yeah. I didn't get to watch Julie either, so I'll go back and watch her too. And I like to catch Meg in the morning if I'm lucky enough to get online in time because Meg she does hers at like 9 30 it's called maker mornings or something and she does beautiful work as well I just love those two girls okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to make this and let's see I've got my I've got some white cardstock but I might need a bigger piece because it's, I've got to cut it out with the layering layering square dies so I'm going to use this die and I will layer it I think it was with this one yeah so just one second okay get some of this out of my way All right, so for this, I'm going to use the Tuxedo Black Memento ink, and this is um, a linen pad, so when you are using it, you just kind of want to twist your stamp just a little bit to make sure that it gets fully loaded, it's particularly with um, stamps that have, um, that are distinctive, so there's different levels of the stamp. Okay, so then we also need to cut a piece of the petal pink. And So I'm just going to take a square off of this, about an inch and a half. Guess what? It wasn't enough. grab my mini embosser and we will cut those out like I said I wasn't very prepared this evening so I'm sorry I just have to grab my stuff when I need it I set this out of the way okay so this is the mini cut emboss machine and emboss machine and 
I just love the mini. It's nice because when I'm doing live videos, I can actually demonstrate how it works and it just doesn't take up much room. So it's rather nice. So if you haven't used one before, you're going to put your cardstock down and then the side that cuts, you're going to put that on top. Usually I will hold this down with a piece of, um, with a post-it, just to make sure that it stays where I want it. These plates are kind of slippery. Stampin' Up! is coming out with a magnetized plate. So when they do that, they'll do it for the large one and then hopefully they'll do it for the smaller one at the same time. So we don't have to mess with, um, holding it down with washi tape or some other tape like post-it notes. All right. Oh, it doesn't want to move. Or it actually wants to move. It doesn't want to go though. Yeah, sure. See how you are? I brag on you and then this happens. One thing about this machine, I have found that if you, if these two bottom plates are level, then then it's great. But then you want to offset this one just a little bit. It seems to go through the machine a lot smoother. Otherwise, it's gotten stuck on me before. I've never had the problem with the larger one though. So I'll set this aside. And then you want to carefully take off your post-it note because it can tear the cardstock. Usually I, I'll kind of rub it on my desk a little bit like that just to get some of the sticky off of it. It looks like it's going to be fine. All right. So put these back so I don't lose them. All right, so now we're going to put the hello down. Looks pretty straight, doesn't it? Oops. And going to put on some dimensionals. We'll pop this up. And like I said, I'll put the supplies that I've used and the sizes of the cardstock and so forth with the video. As soon as I edit it and I can add all of that information, I'll have that ready probably in the next hour or so. It really is kind of easier just to do this with the pick tool. All right, we're going to set that right there. There you go. What do you think? Thanks, Carol. So this is the braided te card technique, and I will have the, um, the template for you. I'll make sure that's available on my blog, I'll give you the instruction, I'll give you the link on how to get there and then you can just download it. So that's my card. And I like to go ahead and fill out the inside. So I think I'm gonna, I wasn't planning on it tonight, but I will grab a piece of cardstock and we'll put that on the inside. So since the card is, um, five and a half by four and a quarter. Then we're going to cut this down to be five and a quarter by four. All 
Oh, but it might have to go smaller than that even because of the braiding. Yeah, it does. I need to take about, let's see, about an inch off of it. Yeah. There we go. All right, so before I take, or before I glue that down, I'm gonna go ahead and put something on the inside. So the outside says hello, and our options with this stamp set is May the Memories of Yesterday Comfort You Today, so I don't feel like that's appropriate. What a beautiful difference one single life makes. I do like that, and the happy birthday, happy Easter, happy spring, happy, happy everything. That's the winner. See if it'll fit on this block. Yeah, it does. All right, so let's um, line this up so we know it's straight. All right, now I'm going to test it. All right, so now we're gonna stamp the card. So I have a Stamparatus, which will line everything up for me perfectly, but when I'm just stamping one or two things, I don't usually get it out. Well, it's a little to the right. Let's try again. There we go. I'm happy. So we'll go ahead and use the liquid glue, put that down. Take a moment for that to dry and there's your card so I hope you liked it I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me this evening thank you Tanya and um, I really enjoyed having you guys here you have no idea I really really appreciate that you were here if you like and share that'd be great I want to I need to increase my uh, audience and the only way to do that is if there's plenty of like and shares because that's how um, Facebook decides who gets the um, most, um, I don't know how they do it, but I mean that, that way then the people who get the most likes and the most shares are the ones that are going to pop up sooner or earlier. So anyway, um, thank you again. My name is Teresa Tucker and I'm a Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator and Consultant and I'm so glad you were here and thank you. Thank you so much. So this video will be ready probably within the hour with all of the information, the sizes and what I used to create the card. And then it will also go up on my YouTube channel, Tucker Top Notch, Top Notch Designs on YouTube. So thank you again. Bye-bye.